Welcome to the Mayal series, I Just Need Some Space, Tips on, for Decluttering and Reorganizing Your Home Office Workshop. Today's Mayal series, Excellence in All Things, is presented by Dr. Ronnie Tiffany Kinder. Dr. Tiffany Kinder is a teacher educator at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. She teaches courses in her free time, enjoys studying and practicing wabi-sabi a worldview and aesthetic grounded in imperfection and impermanence. Her philosophy for organizing is to honor negative space. She says her love for organizing stems from living in Japan and having a Portuguese Hawaiian mother who celebrated Thursday cleaning day. Please help me welcome my good friend, Dr. Rani Tiffany Kinder. Thank you so much for having me here today. I told Joyce I'm a little bit nervous about um, where we are today and doing this. I am by far not at all an expert in decluttering and reorganizing. And I say that, but um, it's definitely um, something that I um, enjoy doing and actually have done this as kind of a side gig um, for people. And so um, as Joyce said, I, I grew up in Japan and um, as many of you know, kind of what's trending these days is Marie Kondo and her, um, the Japanese art of decluttering and re or tidying up, I think is the title of the book. And I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she, she was a Shinto maiden and that means she had to take care of the Shinto shrine. And so when I was in Japan, I grew up in Japan most of my childhood and then into my young adulthood. And I used to live on the same street as the Shinto shrine and to try to be part of the community. I think I was 18 or 19 at the time and living in this small little apartment. I used to spend my time with these types of maidens who did all this cleaning. And so I think that comes, kind of comes from there, and then as Joy said, um, my mom is um, very um, into tidying up. She's, to this day, she still has ironing day and she irons everything from her undergarments to her tablecloths, everything during ironing day. And I don't have ironing day, but um, what I learned from her is how to kind of organize my space. I also, although I lived most of my childhood in Japan, moved around a lot. so having to move and to move into different spaces, it was a constant flow of having to reorganize and how am I going to use the space that's given me because we didn't have the luxury of um, creating our own space. So I thought I would share some of that with you. And usually when I'm teaching, I have a virtual background, but I figure we're talking about home office. So I'm in my home office and I think it's a really good place to start because as you maybe can see from the screen. This is like a dorm room. It's really tiny. And so, and I, I've always lived in small space areas, never been in a big home and um, have been a um, lover of the wabi-sabi philosophy and where you reuse things and things are impermanent and imperfect. And so that's sort of my space here. So a lot of people think, well, to declutter and reorganize your home office, you need to have a big grand office. And actually up until recently, I wasn't even in here. I had a um, child living in my home. So this was his bedroom. And my home office was a desk at the end of my bed. So you can make this anywhere. So here's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're going to, first of all, get grounded. And what I mean by that is, Talk about looking at serving yourself and your beliefs and what you want, because what you really want to do is honor um, your beliefs and what you feel is important, and then survey your space. I don't believe you need to go out and create anything. I think you can make it with what you have. As I said, this space you see me in right now was used for my grandson, to, who was living with us while his family was all in college. And so... Um, I gave up my office and I just had a small desk at the end of my bed and that was my space. So serving our space and then getting started, starting talking about prepping and purging. And I know the purging part is the thing that's really challenging, but I think there's a way to do that. And then how to create designated spaces so that you're setting up your office space so that you have something that you can um, move in and feel like it's your own, that it's not just something you copied off of Pinterest, but it's something that truly resonates with you. And then sustaining those spaces. So a lot of times we set things up and then they just kind of fall apart. So how are we going to sustain them? So we're gonna start with something called a getting grounded activity. So to do that, I need to exit the screen for just a moment. 
And what I'm going to do is um, stop sharing my screen for just a moment. And I need you guys to go to something called joinpd.com. And I can type that in the chat. So it's joinpd.com. And so I use this in my courses. It's called Pear Deck for those of you who are not familiar. And it's going to ask you for um, a code. So I'm going to give you that code in just a minute. Then for those of you who happen to work in professional development or classrooms, I'm going to let you see what I see because Pear Deck is an interactive Google slide add on. Okay, so you're going to go to joinpd.com and it's going to ask you for, sorry, I'm just waiting for it to start. It's going to ask you for a code and then I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the code. And this is what we call an instructor based paste series. I'm going to, sorry, I'm looking to the side. I have a second screen. Just give me a minute. It's launching. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you'll see a code XQNEDF. So you want to go and enter that when you go to joinpd.com and it's going to enter you into our slides. So I can see, for example, and I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I see on my end and you can see what you're seeing on your end. I'm going to pause there for a minute to make sure um, anybody has questions or you're not quite sure. So what we're going to use is this add on to Google Slides. It's free um, called Pear Deck and I use it with um, my students, I teach an elementary ed class um, program. So I'm teaching them to be elementary school teachers. And I try to use tools that they can use in an elementary school classroom. So I'm not trying to speak down to anyone, but I just find these tools fascinating and they're free. So we have 10 students connected. And so not everyone's there yet. And you don't have to be, you can watch this as you go along, but I'll just give you a quick moment. And please type into the chat if you have any questions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start on my end and then you can see how this unfolds. So this is a Google slide presentation, but it allows you to interact with it. And so we're going to be doing that getting started component and ask the question of what are we working with. And so this is what I'm seeing on my end and I can um, actually enter what we call a teacher dashboard, but you should be able to see on your end this question. And I'm going to open my dashboard so that um, Okay, so that I can see. Were you guys able to enter there? Okay, so you should have been able to go to an answer garden. And in the answer garden, you should be able to type in the questions for this. I'm going to actually enter as a student as well so that I can see what you see. And I apologize for this constant moving between screens, um, but it helps me to see what you see. XQN EDF. I'm going to do this actually in another screen. Hold on one minute. So what I'm, the first question is called what is asking you what words would you use to describe your current home office now you can enter more than once. And um, what's going to do what it's going to do is build kind of like a word cloud. Um, and you can see hopefully because I've not used this with Pear Deck before, hopefully you can see that word cloud building so I'm actually entering as a student so that I can see what you see. And it's blank. Okay, it's not like, oh, yeah, you can see. Okay, so you can see that as people add on to the word cloud, um, whatever's, whatever words come up more often are going to be larger. So you can see messy is one of the larger, um, one of the words that's shown. And um, you can ask, enter as many answers as you want. Good so far. Because I can't see you right now, so I'm just going to trust that 
that you're you're able to do this and chat with me. So that's where your current home office is. So take a moment to see what other folks are saying. And you can see it's not maybe for some folks, it's not what they want, but for other, some folks, it is peaceful and cozy. So that's a good thing. Let's try question number two. What word would you use to describe your ideal home office? And that word home office, that phrase could be, um, could be relative. It could be a home space, a workspace, a common workspace. So go ahead and type in there and I'm gonna do the same. Um, and it slowly starts to repopulate. Okay, and this helps me see what it is that you're interested. And seeing and I'm going to stop my share for one quick moment so I can see you. Okay, next question. Agree or disagree. So with this question, you should see a red ball and you can slide it to either agree or disagree. Do you agree with that statement? It's important to me that my home office is organized. For some people, this might seem like a, oh yeah, must everybody thinks that, but not necessarily. A lot of people do not agree that that, some people might not agree that that's it. So I'm gonna share again my screen so that you can see what I see for those of you who are teachers or who do professional development. So you can see what I see and most people here are saying agree, okay? So let's go to the next one. It's important to me that my home office is personalized or decorated. So go ahead and slide either way and you can see how people are. So you can see this is kind of a 50-50 thing. Okay, great. And so I'm sharing with you on screen. Hopefully it's not causing too much um, clutter on your screen, but I wanted you to be able to see what I see. So here we have the next question. How would you describe your home workspace? And so I, just to clarify some terms. So it's a de designated office is like what I'm in right now. I have a room, a space, and this is where I work. A common area might be an area that I share. So I might share a workspace with my um, partner or my child. So we all have kind of a same purpose. It's a common area that we all share. I should have called it a shared workspace, but it's a common area that's designated for that particular activity. A multi-purpose is when you're maybe pulling out your work and you're sitting at your dining table. And at the end of the day, you take it away so that you uh, guys can eat. Um, so I know a lot of people who are doing that. So multi-purpose is it doesn't maintain that workspace all day long, it kind of changes. Whereas a common area, it's, it's designated workspace, but not only to you, it's, to, it's shared with others. Okay, hopefully we're doing okay because I can't see the chat or your faces right now. Alrighty, and so another is a, a multiple choice question is which statement best describes you? So be, are you a minimalist? You like to have open spaces. Do you have, wanna have everything necessary, supplies and resources? So this is kind of, I need to be sufficient, adequate, have just enough. And C is I want personal objects, professional resources and extras just in case. That extra packet of post-its, boxes of pens, two printers just in case, all of those. And you can see on my screen how people are answering. So I can't see individual responses, but I can see um, what you guys are saying and you can kind of get a feel for the room here. Great. I have just a few more. So as we're doing this, start thinking about were these questions you've ever reflected on when you think of your home office? Have you ever sat there and thought about how do I like my space? What is it I'm after? Okay, and I, I'm going to move forward just on the sake of time. So true or false? I need to have my area neatly organized before I begin working. So do you have to have, can you just pretty much walk in, plop down and start working? Or do you have to have all your ducks in a row first? So I'm gonna pause there as you're working through this and talk about how one of the things I mentioned to Joyce as we started. So I started thinking about workspace when Joyce and I were taking a class together about almost, gosh, Joyce, almost four years ago. And in that class we had different readings we did in one of the class one of the 
um, readings we did had to do about beauty. And it was kind of a confusing <laughs> book, but it was talking about beautiful spaces and I really connected with it. I got it. And then in another class, one of the instructors was talking about when she wrote her dissertation and her dad had told her, don't worry about your space, just sit down and work. And I thought to myself, I couldn't do that. I need my space to have a certain certain elements ingrained into it before I can work. Okay, so knowing that kind of set the stage for my work for the rest of that program. Joyce and I also took some classes together and we would talk about how we couldn't write or work in the particular space that we were in. Either the physical space wasn't working for us or the people, it was just too many people around us. So that awareness of what do you need before you can start working matters. I know people who can pretty much get up and work anywhere. The other thing is think about in terms of the context of your home office. So I would have answered this question true. I need my space to be organized. However, I can take my computer and I can sit anywhere, a parking lot, a coffee shop. You know, I've actually sat in the floor of um, a grocery store waiting for something. Um, it's a long story. I can sit anywhere with my computer, but when I'm home, I need it to be a certain way. Okay, couple more. What do you like most about your home office? So this is a space where you can answer by typing it in. Like, what do you like most? It could be something physical, such as your desk, your chair, your lighting, um, your filing cabinet, um, or it could be something that's more a feeling like your airflow, um, just that feeling of coziness, someone said, um, being at peace, being comfortable. And I apologize, these are not anonymous so if you want to not put it in I won't scroll through them all um, if someone has a problem with that uh, color lighting personal items lighting is a one that's come up your desk so what is it that you really really like so it could be a physical thing or kind of an emotional or ethereal thing great I think I have two more. All right. And then what would you like to change? Okay, what would you like to change about your office space? Now think about things you would you can change. So for example, I can't make my office any bigger. I could change, like it'd be nice in the summer to have a split AC. Um, it could be something physical. It could be the way it's organized. It could be even just the smells of your office. Like do you want aromatherapy or or um, incense, candles, sounds, music. This is really important because one of the things that um, I should have mentioned early on is, and we're talking about decluttering and reorganizing, we're talking about physical space. There's a whole other conversation about digital space. Okay, that's maybe another series that Joyce can put together. How do you declutter your digital space? Uh, and I'm not talking just email, I'm talking everything. But we're talking about physical space. And so one of the things to think about is um, what do I want to change in terms of my physical, tangible objects and my surround, surrounding space? And then the next one, what is a non-negotiable? Something you won't change. There's no way you're going to give it up. Like I really need to have you know, my phone next to me at all times. Um, I need to have an open window, sunlight. Um, some people really still want to have a filing cabinet. I gave one up years ago, but some people really need that. Bookshelf, um, the location, um, something you just won't give up. A certain chair, stand-up desk. And one of the things I wanted to mention in physical space as well, is there's a lot of research out there about how to make it ergonomically safe like healthier because it would help you with your fatigue and things like that nice plugs wi-fi something i won't give up and i think that's pretty much it so i'm gonna go ahead stop this share for just a moment i'm gonna end this session and bring us back to our slides okay and then return home sorry about that So I'm going to pause there for a moment just to see if there are any questions. And I'm going to go back and share. 
using this. Okay, so that was just an opportunity for us to get grounded and to use um, Pear Deck to assess where we are as well as Answer Garden. So one of the questions you might have is why do I even need to declutter and organize, reorganize? Um, and it may be that you're very comfortable working within clutter and organization. So I'm going to cite Marie Kondo. I'm not actually an advocate for her. I actually don't even read a lot of her stuff, but I had watched something and read something by her about called, I think, the joy of work or something like that. And I thought this is really great because I'm a big lover of John Dewey and having joyful learning is really important to me. And I think that having joyful space helps. But I'm thinking, where's the research in that? So according to her, and I did follow up on her research and she was actually right on the money, 90% of American adults feel that clutter negatively impacts their lives. So feeling that way, clutter is going to increase your cortisol levels. So these are things that are going to cause you to have depression, insomnia, anxiety, and stress. Now keep in mind what is clutter to some is not clutter to others. For some people, it's comfort. So earlier, I, uh, Joyce mentioned, I really like negative space. So growing up in Japan, when you go into a, a department store or actually a boutique, it's not like Ross's with, you know, jam-packed clothing. There's tons of empty space on the shelves. And the idea is that allows energy to flow through the store. So they say, okay, but for some people like my sister, she really likes to have lots of things around her. I feel like it's clutter. She calls it coziness. So be sure that you know like what you think clutter is um, and so and you define it. So clutter can cause distractions as well and it also can cause you to search for lost things. Um, and according to the statistics, we Americans lose one work week per year looking for lost items. And then on a business level, I'm having kind of a clutter filled um, disorganized space can negatively impact business. So we re declutter and organize or reorganize to increase our productivity and positivity, to decrease mental fatigue, and to have an effective use of our time and resources. So it's quite important to remain um, in our space how we feel about decluttering. So we know why it's important. We know where our kind of our, our baseline is. So how do we get started? And so my thought is to work with what you have. Sorry, I don't think that you need to go out and buy um, a whole bunch of stuff in order to organize your space. One of the things you should do, and this is just a recommendation. Remember, I'm not a guru at this. It's just something I enjoy doing. I suggest take out what you have, like take all of it out. And I cracked up when I saw that on um, the Marie Kondo show, because that's one of the things she said. And I just, I think it's so funny because this is sort of the way I've always been. Now, I remember as a child, I moved at least once a year, sometimes two or three times a year. So I was always having to take all my stuff out and put it all back. And I think I carry those behaviors as an adult. So at some point, take out everything that you have to the degree that you can and take a look at it and think about what is it that you need now and often because that's the stuff you want to keep close i need this now and i need it often so it might be a pair of scissors a pencil your telephone um, your calendar things like that and then think about what is it that i need once in a while i don't need it all the time every day but i need it once in a while now for some people this might indeed be their calendar some people it might be um like for for me it would be my textbook from my class i don't look at it every day but i do need it once in a while i need it close by and then once you have everything out it's a really great idea to organize it into categories, categories that make sense to you. These are my papers, these are my books, these are my schedules, these are my um, protocols or standards, whatever it is that makes sense to you. But organizing what you have into piles or spaces would help. Now, for some of you, you might have a very full office. So to take out what you have, all of it is just simply not possible. My suggestion would be to take it out by categories. So there have been folks who will say, oh, I'll take out this closet or this drawer. I recommend you actually keep continue sweeping through your space and take out things according to categories. I'm going to take out all my books. I'm going to take out all my papers, all my office supplies, because when you do that and you organize it, then you can really see what you have doing it by category. 
Now, tricky part. This is where it gets hard. Time to purge. Inevitably, there are things that you probably don't need. So letting go of the things that you used to need. So we sometimes hold on to things that have nostalgic interest. So give you a, for example, for some reason, I continue to hold on to this. I hope you can, guys can see it. I don't know if I can see um, what you see, but I have this jar of pens. I never use the pens in this jar. My sister made the jar and I've had, had this pens on my desk the entire time I was teaching elementary school. Now the pens have kind of come and go, but this jar of pens has been, it's nostalgia and I just refuse to get rid of it. But I actually don't even use the pens in the jar. I use the pens in my cat container. So why do I have these two things? I don't know. So I, after I was planning for this, I thought I'm gonna rethink this, maybe put a plant in it or something. So nostalgia. Let go of those things. But these are things you used to need, but you don't now. Then think about the things that you keep with the idea that, oh, I'm going to keep this to use someday. Someday I'm going to use this. So someday I'm going to use that binder. And so you might have 15 three ring binders in your, um, in your office space. Maybe those are things you don't really need. And so that's one thing to consider, the someday items. Another thing is to let go of things that are outdated, unused, or broken. So do you still have a container of floppy disks sitting in your office? Some people do. Even CDs, like blank CDs. Um, do you really need those? So things that are outdated, unused, or broken. That unused thing is hard. So what if I have this packet of pink Post-its I really, really liked them when I bought them. I've never opened the packet and I bought it in 2014. Maybe it's time to purge that. Now, I'm not suggesting throw it away. In fact, I rarely throw things away. I always send them forward to somewhere else, either Salvation Army or a shelter or something. So that's that reduce repetition piece. Do we really need 125 post-it pads of the same size and color? So this is the reverse Costco mentality. Maybe we don't need to have this entirely huge pile of things. So that reducing repetition. But in spite of all of that, if you're uncertain, like, okay, then my uncertainty is this thing of pens. If you're uncertain, put it on the back burner, but be sure to get back to it. So I'm not really sure I want to get rid of this yet. Then I like to, I actually stick a post-it, speaking of post-its, on it and say, rethink. And I always do that. Like, rethink. Maybe I don't need this. And so that's another way to consider. Okay. Hopefully we're doing okay. Please just stop me if I'm just rambling. Okay. So we're going to play a little game. And this is going to require you to turn on your cameras. And and it's totally voluntary whether you want to participate or not. So I play this game with my students, both elementary school students and my undergraduates and called Gimme Gimme. And actually we play this game as a family um, as well when we get together on Zoom. So what I want you to do, if you're in your home office space or just somewhere nearby, I want you to grab something that was one of those non-negotiables, something you are just not gonna let go of. You really have to have it in your office space regardless. So go get it and then bring it back to the screen and then hold it. So for example, this is mine. It's my little cat pen container. So find something that is a non-negotiable. You have to have it and then show it on the screen. And I'm going to look at my screen so I can see all of you. Aha. So I see I love it. There's personal things. And Deanna, can you tell me what that is? This is a um, aroma therapy thing. Nice. So it has my peppermint smell in it. Thanks. And Pam, can you tell me what that is? Oh, I see it now. I got it. Yeah, it's just a small ipu and chopsticks <laughs> that I use. Yes. <laughs> and Luana, that's a gift? Yeah? Yes, it was my Mother's Day gift last year. And I, yeah, it's a non-negotiable. <laughs> non-negotiable. And then Julie has her, Julie, is that your glasses? <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> yes and tiki can i i oh i see oh my gosh it's um my cousin got this for me from india i think it was like five years ago um and i just always keep it nearby when i'm working 
Nice. So my suggestion would be to build build your space around that non-negotiable. Put it somewhere where it's not going to get buried, where people will see it when they walk in. And by people, I really just mean you, um, where it's going to be like right out there so you can see it and build it build your space around it. So for me, it is definitely my pens and I like to see it wherever I go, but there are other things as well. Like behind me, I have this little bulletin board thing and that's sort of my to-do list. Um, and think about what you pulled. Like some of you pulled something personal, some of you pulled something professional or very practical like glasses. But I think it's important that you know that. So the next gimme gimme is similar to me having this like why? Why do I have this? Because I don't I've never taken a pen out of here in a year. What is something that's around you that you wonder, why do I have it? Or I, I really should get rid of that. Like, that's not important, really. Do you have something that's kind of a, why do I do that? So you can show that. We're opening our closets to the world. Here. Everything. Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> just my space. I'll just rotate the camera everywhere. <laughs> Tiki, what do you got there? I have two mason jars. Um, one has my, what's it called, paint brushes, and the other one has, again, pens that I don't use. Yeah. And yeah. what do you got, Luana? What do you have? Is that like a clip? I don't know why. I have nowhere where I can, this is a magnet. I have nowhere yeah. metal around me that I could put this on. So it just yeah. sits on my desk taking up space. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deanna's cracking me up. Deanna has the boom box. And for those young people, if you have no idea what I just said, I apologize for my aged uh, vocabulary. Okay, now Kaylee, I can see his I get, face. I get tons of notepads. I think this is a non-negotiable. I need tons of notepads. <laughs> and, and you know, some people have to have some that. Some kind of munchies. I've got extra masks. <laughs> I mean, pretty much just show everything like this, right? Everything is just right. everywhere. <laughs> and you know, the thing with, now I'm, I talked about these, these things that like you wonder, notice I didn't say these are things to get rid of, but these are things to kind of pause and wonder. And then that's going to take us on and I'm going to, sorry, I keep looking to the side. Um, that's going to take us on to our next screen because we're going to start thinking about creating, sorry, my thing keeps like flipping for it, creating these designated spaces. So you don't necessarily have to get rid of these things, but you got to have some sort of designated space in the same way that we wanted to highlight the things that are, are non-negotiable. We got to have them. And then we want to put on the side the things we don't. So let's talk about the, the non-negotiable stuff. So one of the things to do is have a designated space for it. So let's say you're someone who has to have, okay, so I have to have a drink nearby me, not like alcohol kind drink, but but coffee or water or something. But the problem is, is when I, ha I have a water bottle that bleeds, it's one of those like um, hippy dippy crystal bottles and it bleeds. So I have this cute little, actually it's a Japanese um, washcloth that women carry in their purses, but I have this at my desk because I always put my drink on top. And so having like a space for your munchies and your drink is really important. So when you start thinking of designated spaces, I think the the problem is just putting things wherever, because then we get into that spending one week looking for lost things. So you have your work here. This is just an example, not saying you should follow it. I just used my own example. So you have your work area. So this is like my desk or Kaylee's desk. Your work area has your computer, your daily work tools, such as your pen, your notebook paper, your planner. You might have, I have like three different um, notebooks that I write in for different things I have those nearby that's my work area this is my daily stuff I what you don't want to do suggestion is don't use your desk as a storage area so I know like especially when I was in the eight so I'm a child of the 80s and looking like your desk is really messy was sort of a sign of success so we had the three little bins on top of our um, desks the in bin the pending bin the out bin I never have bins anymore. My work area is for work. I have another space for other things such as storage and whatnot. So suggestion, don't store stuff on your work area. Another possible designated area, and again, I say possible, 
is your binders, textbooks, and manuals. So if you don't, I know most of you have a bookshelf, but if you don't have a bookshelf, maybe it's a good time to get one that's functional and not one that is just like busting at the seams, but one where you can actually visually see everything. So one of the reasons why you want to have a designated workspace is you want to be able, or, or sorry, a designated workspace for each area is you want to be able to see what, um, what you have. If you see it, you're more inclined to use it. If you don't see it, you tend not to use it. Um, so I think of resources, manuals, things like that. Another category or designated workspace are your supplies. So we have our consumable supplies and our non-consumable supplies. So what I mean is the consumable are things like tape. Oh, sorry, I accidentally skipped a thing. Tape, um, pens, stuff that you're gonna go through post-its, that's the consumable. The non-consumable are things like scissors, hole punches, um, staples, things like that. So that's another designated space. So in my office at, at the university, we have a table for all of our quote supplies. So we don't actually put them in a cabinet. We have them on a table and they're in little bins um, and they're in these bins so that we can see them and then we don't buy them again thinking we don't have them. And then how are you going to organize your personal effects? Like how are you going to organize things like your art or mementos or snacks? So having some designated workspace or designated space for these things matters. Every item needs a home. Everything needs somewhere to go because that way when I'm looking for my office supplies, I know where it is. So as I mentioned I'm working a very small space so these are this is actually my clothes closet behind me but in the in the closet I have like a plastic um thing I bought like at Target for $12 and there's drawers and my daughter who is just like me labeled them so there's like um, paper things she put metal and plastic things there's not it's not even a fancy word and um organizers like folders and things like that yeah so you want to have some kind of system, I guess you could say, for how you're going to organize your work area. So I think that that's really important. So I want you to take, kind of being mindful of time, take a moment um, to, to look at your space, kind of a visual walkthrough. And so what are some designated spaces you would like to create? So you're, and you might want to even write some ideas on post-it paper and put it in that space, but you want to be sure that things have a home. And so how might you or reorganize your space so that all of your notebooks are here or your funny magnetic clips are there or where things are. So if you think of, for those of you who remember elementary school classrooms, there are designated spaces for everything. This is where the paper towels are. This is where the Kleenex is. So I don't know if that's where I'm coming from. So just take a moment and we are eventually going to be in a breakout room and I don't know if maybe this would be even a time to do it. I'm looking at time, but I want you to, I'm gonna give you 60 seconds to take a visual walk through your home office. And then for now we'll, we'll share as a whole group. I, I think we're good on numbers and if you would like to share um, what's one designated space you want to create. So I'll give you 60 seconds. I'm watching my clock. So as you're thinking about your designated spaces, I did much the same. And I have, actually I can even show it to you. Let me see, I grab it. On my desk, I think I bought this like at Salvation Army or something. I have this thing that has like pads and post-its and stuff I use all the time. And what the problem is, is I have my mail in here. And I need a different different space 
for mail because I forgot to do my car registration because it got lost in that space. And so I need a designated space for mail. And apparently that's a really big deal, the mail thing. Does anybody have thoughts or would like to share a designated space that they feel they need to make for their um, office? And you can just unmute and share if you have. Hi, aloha, it's Luana. Hi, um, Luana. I def I have, I don't even want to show you guys because it's embarrassing, but I have this bin <laughs> under my desk and it's kind of the, okay, I don't know where this is going to go. So I just throw it there and like my folders, my files. So I definitely need to make, to go through that and especially have like a place at home for my files, you know? Um, yeah. I have some files, the files that I'm able to take home here, you know, paperwork and stuff that's accumulated. So I definitely need to work on that. Thanks. Yeah, papers are always the, the battle. Papers. Anybody else have a designated space that they would like to try to create? Yeah, this is a Deanna. So um, right now, where I do my work at home, which I try not to work at home, but I do have <laughs> I do take classes and working on my dissertation. So, um, but uh, is my printer is in the room where my uh, modem is and I have not set up my switch outside because I wired my house for ethernet. It's mm -hmm. not, I don't use Wi-Fi. I mean, I do, but only for like my iPad. And I'd like to have a space where my computer is that I can put my printer scanner, I have a place that, you know, cause my computer doesn't have a, in uh, built in webcam. So sometimes I like to take the webcam off and put it on the side, my headsets, you know, microphones, stuff like that. Um, you know, all these little connectors that I may or may not have to use with the different gadgets that I use. Cause I do, in case you're wondering, I do video production and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm, you know, having to plug in, unplug, you know, my hub, whatever. And right now, what I do is when I'm done, I just take my headsets and I just kind of throw it on the keyboard or the webcams over here behind and everything gets all tangled up. So, you know, that space where all those electronic gadgets can go along with, you know, better cable management, of course. <laughs> okay sorry i'm having some connectivity issues so i'm actually trying to tell someone in my house to get off of the internet so hold on one second hold on one second okay hopefully hopefully can you guys still hear me Okay, because I'm having it's I'm getting some messages that I'm um, unstable internet. So I think that just that consciousness of knowing I need a space for this is really important. And then in a perfect world, then you give yourself a timeline. But I think with COVID, it's really hard because the one thing that we can't do is um, rely on anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, you think you have time this week and then you get just totally thrown off. So I think in this particular time of COVID, I think people have this this crazy belief that we have all this time now so that we can do things. I'm like, are you crazy? We're working harder than ever before. But it's a good time to kind of just take note that this is something I'm going to do at some point and then um, make that space for yourself. So then the question is, how do you sustain that space? And so these are just my thoughts of tips for having a sustaining, a joyful, productive space. I think it's important that your space is not just something that you're producing work. I think you have to enjoy it. And so by coming, when you create a space that you enjoy, you look kind of look forward to being in that space. So for example, I work, I'm a night owl and I work a lot at night. And in front of me, on the other side of you guys, the screen, I have this window and I had bought these like lights like sh those curtain lights so that at night I have all this lit up uh, scenery going on in here. Um, it's important to me so that way in the evening after dinner when everybody's gone to sleep I come in here with my hot tea and I sit here with my computer and I have a good sound system and good lighting 
and then I'm happy to work. So it's a joyful space. So for some folks, having things around you is what makes it joyful. For some, it's more of a sensory thing of having certain smells. Aromatherapy is a big one. Um, sound, do you want music? No music. Um, I sometimes, depending on the work I'm doing, have a movie playing on one screen and I'm working on another screen. Some people are like, how the heck can you do that? Um, so it's very, very different. Um, um, the other thing is I mentioned before is to be sure that everything has a home. So invest, and when I say invest, it doesn't mean you'll buy, containers, shelves, or bins. So, you know, like getting old containers that you have. My world is mason jars of old pasta jars and jelly jars. Um, and I sometimes will tie a ribbon around them or raffia actually, just so they look pretty. But having things go into a container, kind of, you know, what, what um, Luana was saying earlier, just having the container on the floor under the desk is really important versus just throwing it on the floor. And so having these containers or to put things in will help you to have a more organized space. Purge your paper daily. I need to do that. Um, we get so much paper. And so think about the paper you don't need and get rid of it. Um, or have at least a box to put it in so that you know you can get rid of it later. So for example, um, at my home, at my work office, um, I have learned I needed to keep copies of things for like my promotion dossier. And I didn't realize that. And I'm not really good at navigating it digitally. So I was printing them. I have a box under my desk and I throw it under there. So I'd print like an email that I had confirming a conference I attended and I'll put it on the box underneath my desk. That works for me. It's a lot of paper, but it's not, um, it's something I'm using. Whereas if I go to a conference and I get the agenda, do I really need to keep that for later? Um, probably not. I would, um, I'm kind of working my way around this slide, consider open shelving. So remember I mentioned how in my in our workspace, we don't have a cabinet with office supplies. We put our office supplies out where we can see it in a container. Um, we use what we see. And then the big one, finish what you start. So um, if you bring home, like I brought home a bunch of books from my office for my spring courses, rather than just throw them on my desk, I actually put them on my bookshelf. So I've, I brought them in the house. I didn't just dump them on the kitchen counter or on my desk. I put them away. So seeing things to the end, when you go to Costco and you buy, you know, the 58 white expo pens, put them somewhere rather than just leave them out because that can become kind of habitual. And so be sure that you include things again that bring you joy, art, candles, lighting, aromatherapy. You wanna have a joyful space, but don't forget your space also has to have purpose. So although I have this great lighting and sounds going on in my office, I'm not here to watch movies all night long. I'm here to actually work. So I need to be sure I, I'm not too cozy. So I actually have a kind of uncomfortable chair and I do it on purpose so that I don't get too cozy in my space. Um, so we're almost kind of at our close, but I did want you guys to have a little bit of time for a breakout room, just a small amount, because I want you to think and talk forward. So sometimes when we say something, we're more likely to do it. But when it stays stuck in our own heads, then we might not ever move forward with that. So I want you to think about what are your next steps that you're going to take to declutter and organize your space. I'd keep it kind of narrow. I wouldn't say like, I'm going to empty my entire closet tonight because it's likely not going to happen. Um, it might, but not likely. So what are your next steps? And then what questions do you have or wonderings do you have about how to create a positive, organized home office? And so I kind of want you to think about my next steps and my wonderings. I'd like to send you into breakout rooms for five minutes to talk with others about that. We have... Um, 16 of us in the room and Joyce I'm hoping that that's okay I I wanted to ask you if that is okay oh, that's totally fine that's totally okay fine. then yeah. people have a chance for their voices to be heard and to talk with each other and then we'll come back in just a few minutes um so we'll do that and then we'll wrap up so I'm going to go ahead and start the breakout rooms it's just going to be um a randomizing one and I'll go ahead and create that now. And yep, I have three or four in each room. And I'll stay here and I'm going to let you guys go and I'll give you a one minute warning when we're going to come back.
So if you have um, wonderings, sometimes it helps to say it, like sometimes just to talk through it. So on honor of time, we have five minutes left and that's pretty much what I got for today, but I would like to open the floor to anybody who has any questions. And then I'll also put in the chat um, a feedback form and I hope that this will work. Let me know if it doesn't. And hold on one second. Hopefully that'll work. We'll see. Um, but if anybody has any thoughts they'd like to share, or any ahas you got from your group, please. It's all you. I have a question. You know, the, the things that you think you might use someday. Um, I got rid of stuff that I thought I might use someday, but I hadn't used in quite a while. And then like, not even six months later, I found that I needed it again. And I was like, Oh, man, you know, I could have used that. Oh, no. So do you have a suggestion for? Is there an area we can put that kind of stuff? Because I know you said back burner it. But I mean, yeah. is there a back burner area that we, we should I think there use? should be. Yeah, I think there should be. I think that it's important to have the things that you use all the time near in your space, the things that you use periodically. But I do think I mean, I'm not a personally a, a big fan of storage, but I think it's more personal because of the nature of my work. However, I think that um, and the nature of my lifestyle. But I think that there are things, it's, so there's two things. I think that when you put things on back burner, have a space where you put stuff where I'm not really sure. Like if you are just not, if you have even the inkling that you're not sure about getting rid of it, I wouldn't, I would hold on to it. And then have it somewhere where you can act access it and store it well. So some people say storing things in clear containers is better than, um, dark color containers or cardboard is not the best because of the you know insect problem the other thing is and I read this somewhere and I can't remember where is when that happens either remember or write it down write down that thing that you wish you had not thrown away so that you don't make the same mistake so I have a tendency to um, get rid of things like that are, are big, like a sweater or a sweat jacket, things that are bulky clothes. And inevitably I need it because I'm going somewhere cold and I don't have it anymore. So I kept, I even wrote in my planner, stop throwing away sweaters or stop donating, I don't throw them away, stop donating sweaters. But now I have a container that I put these sweaters in because I read that. But yeah, it's hard when you do get rid of things. But at the same time, you know, my mom has these like paper doilies that she bought at Price Busters. And just that I said Price Busters tells you how long she's had these. And I keep telling her, mom, is it replaceable? Like if you find out you really need paper doilies later, can't we just go buy some that are fresh and pretty? So that's the other question is how, how replaceable is it? So some of those sweaters, they're not replaceable. I mean, it's hard, right? So if it's like post-its or I always keep going to post-its because people have tons, paper clips, that kind of stuff, you can replace it. But if it's that really beautiful ceramic pot, maybe that's not the thing to get rid of. Does that make sense? And of course, things that have like history, like family history, to me, that's the non-negotiable. To me, that's the thing you find a home for it, put it somewhere, if, even if it's not in your space. Um, my sister does that like she's a she's a bit of a clutterer but she rotates things so Deanna that might help like she might have like that piece out and then after six months she rotates it with another piece so she re rotates her art but she has a ton of art and so she rotates her art and I rotate my books like sometimes I'll put um, books nearby that I haven't seen in a while and I'll rotate those out my uh, professional books not my personal ones do you know if that link worked? Okay, good. Yes, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I rarely copied and pasted it. I usually send it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be here, um, you know, if anybody wants to chat, but it's one o'clock and I wanted to honor time because like I said, COVID, we are so overwhelmed by our tasks, but good luck in organizing and talking with each other. And Joyce, mahalo for inviting me today. It's so good to see your face. And Julie, I haven't seen you guys in so long. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. You guys